This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express. So we're live on SABC3. Now, you heard it before the break. Exciting stuff as we're talking about nutrition, diets. Probably the most talked about thing at the moment. Now, whether you're talking about food, health plans, or even a diet, well, the Banting diet is something that is featured uh, in some conversation. Professor Tim Noakes from the University of Cape Town Sports Science Institute is in our studio to talk about his eating plan that thousands of South Africans are literally talking about, converting about, and everyone is calling it the Banting diet. Now, the Banting diet, I'm told, is a high-fat, moderate protein and low-carbohydrates diet, uh, which claims to work for weight loss. And also with us in studio, we have um, the scientist behind uh, the diet, or someone else, via Skype, uh, Patrick Holford is also joining us. He's a nutritional advisor and also a psychologist in the UK to unpack uh, on his own theory on the Banting diet. Patrick, first of all, can you hear me all the way from the UK? Yes. Okay, we're going to keep him on the line. I can hear him now. And then, Patrick, just stay with us uh, as we are live. And then, Professor Tim Noakes, welcome to the studio. Thank you, Alana. Okay. You have an advantage because you're live here with us. But, Professor, let's start with you. Your diet, the Banting diet, is making waves. Everyone's talking about it around the country. Can you explain how this high-fat, low-carb diet works towards fighting weight loss? I mean, how did you discover that you were resistant to carbohydrates? I discovered that I had type 2 diabetes, right. uh, which is a condition of insulin resistance in which you're unable to metabolize carbohydrates. And I think that this condition is much more widespread. And in fact, it's probably the single most important medical condition globally. Because if you have insulin resistance and you eat a high carbohydrate diet for a long time, you develop your weight gain, ultimately you become obese, you develop diabetes, and you may develop heart disease, probably dementia as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole range of diseases which the underlying problem is insulin resistance. Mm. And our point is simply that if you have insulin resistance, the only thing that will ultimately help you is to cut your carbohydrates. And I don't think we fully understand the role of carbohydrates in nutrition. They make us hungry. They stimulate the brain to make you hungry and to keep eating. Mm. And what we find when we put people on these diets where we give them more fat and protein and we restrict the carbohydrate, they lose their hunger, and it's really simple for them to lose weight. The Banting diet encourages high-fat, moderate protein, low-carbohydrate in one's diet. You just said that. Dietitians argue that the balanced diets or the fruits and grains and carbs that we were taught about in school as part of the food chain, uh, they say that that's what we need because it's ideal. How do you respond to that statement? That's fine if you're insulin sensitive. And that's the key. The key difference, the only difference I have with the dietitians is you must look at the individual patient. Right. And if the patient is obese and has heart disease and high blood pressure, they're very probably insulin resistant. And you cannot cure that patient with any medication we know unless mm. you restrict the carbohydrates. Now, we also have Patrick Holford, our nutritional advisor, all the way from the UK and also psychologist on the line. Patrick, we tried you earlier. Are you live with us? Can you say hi for me? I'm live with you, yes. Yay, Patrick is on the line. Now, so far we've been speaking to <laughs> Professor Tim Noakes about the Banting diet that we were just talking about. You advocate a low GL, which is glycemic load approach to healthy eating. Uh, are you against the Banting diet and under what circumstances? Well, the first thing to understand is that lowering your glycemic load, in other words, the sugar level in your blood and your insulin, uh, is the holy grail, not only of, of diet, but of, of health. And there are two ways to do that. One is not eating carbohydrates. That's the Banting diet approach. The other is eating a little bit more protein, uh, less carbohydrates, and the right kind of carbohydrates. And that's what I advocate. Okay. And the reason I advocate that, um, I disagree with Professor Tin Noakes. We have phenomenal results reversing diabetes. We have one lady who's had diabetes for 15 years, injecting insulin, this is type 2 diabetes, and now she needs no insulin at all. So the, the question is simply which diet is better and which diet is better long term. And head-to-head -head trials of a low-GL diet with the Banting diet type approach, which is basically Atkins, um, have not shown any better results with the Banting diet, especially after one year. And the reason is that this way of eating is not very sustainable. Now, the question is, are there dangers associated with it? And the answer is yes. I mean, just two months ago, there was a major review of high protein diet approaches in people with no kidney problems at all. Uh, and they showed very clear changes that are associated with kidney stress. That's one problem. 
The other problem is that if you have a very high meat diet, this is a very high meat diet, and also dairy products, those two food groups increase the risk of cancer. Okay. I have no problem with the Banting diet in the short term for a couple of months to kickstart uh, a health regime, but long term, this is not a healthy diet, nor is it the most effective way. To that was going to be my next question What's to you, Patrick. So, just another question to Professor. Uh, Can I just, just make the point that there's moment, no Professor, basis for what you, you said? I've just joined in. We're talking to Professor Tim Noakes and also to Patrick Halford uh, based on the Banting diet. Professor, your question. This, there's been studies about this, and you just said it. It benefits diabetic and overweight people. Doesn't include your average Joe, because I mean, everyone's talking about it, and they even talked about the fact that cauliflower is sold out, you know, because everyone is trying to make a match yeah. from it. Uh, is the eating plan designed for everyone? What are the medical benefits? Yeah, I must just say to? that what Patrick said is wrong. This is not a high protein diet. He had to slip into the whole high protein story. It's not a high protein diet. This diet works because it is biologically based. And if you have insulin resistance, you have to cut the carbohydrates down to a certain level. And his statement that this diet does not, has not performed better than others, it's unsustainable, is completely unproven. I've been on the diet for four years. My sister's been on it for 40 years. There are millions of people around the world who've eaten this diet for tens of years. Yeah. So okay. Patrick is completely at, at sea when he says that. Health is the ultimate goal for all of us, I think. You know, we all want to be healthy and we want to be healthy until the day that we're not around anymore. Uh, Patrick, according to you, what do you advocate as a, a compromise or even a diet solution? What would you say? How can we stay healthy? How can we stay healthy? Well, I mean, first of all, I want to say that, that I disagree with Tim Noakes again. Rule six of his diet is don't eat more than 80 grams of meat with any meal. That's in one meal. Now, that is high protein. And uh, only two months ago, there was a very substantial review of high protein diets with just as much protein as his. As his. And it concludes, and it's not me, in the light of the high risk of kidney disease among obese, um, obese weight reduction programs recommending high protein from animal sources should be handled with caution. The best way to lose weight is to lower your intake of carbohydrates, um, increase your intake of protein, eat the right kind of carbohydrates, and uh, for example, one of the banting rules is really cut back on fruit. Well, berries are, are actually completely fine. Uh, you really do want to have berries. You want to eat whole foods, not refined foods. And any day, I would be more than happy to do a head-to-head -head of volunteers on the Banting diet versus the low GL diet. Okay, they both work. But, but uh, Patrick, you, you can't do that because you're not a scientist. You see, that's okay. the problem. Uh, Professor, what are your last comments on staying healthy? How can we stay healthy? Just to make the point, Patrick is not a scientist, so he can't do any research. I'm a scientist. I can do the research. What you have to do, every single individual has to work out exactly how many carbohydrates is healthy for them. And if they're profoundly insulin resistant, the only way you can survive long term is to cut your carbohydrates. Patrick does not tell us that carbohydrates are completely non-essential to health. We do not need to eat one gram of carbohydrate to be healthy. And okay. that's the whole point of this. And that is the whole point. Stay healthy, okay? I'm really hungry now after talking <laughs> about all of that. Patrick, thanks for joining us all the way from the UK. We appreciate you. Professor, thank you so much for joining us Pleasure. as well. Professor Tim Noakes in our studio and also Patrick Holford all the way from the UK. Well, he sold thousands of books. We're unpacking the Banting diet and also opinions. What do you think, huh? I'd like to take the, uh, this question onto our Expresso Facebook page. So make sure you log on and tell us exactly what you think. Well, that's it for our nutrition at this stage. On the other side, it seems like we are eating away. Lee, what's happening? Oh, you can make